Okay, Brian Hummel here walking through a nice hill country landscape, pointing out different plants that have grown. We've got a, uh, a hill country pinstemon. Uh, I think those came mainly from seeds I planted. We've got some uh, blackfoot daisy that are uh, pretty much everywhere. This is one of my favorite plants, Damianita. It smells delicious. And then we start going into a normal caliche moonscape. There's a lot of this around the hill country. I'm trimming some of these trees up just trimming off the lower branches, trying to get a taller, straighter growth pattern. I lay the brush down on the ground that ends up protecting the landscape. And now let's talk a little bit about berm and swales. So this was a caliche berm I put up. I didn't cover it with any uh, mulch or any organic matter. It's just basically what I dug out of here, I put up there, and that's what I was making this contour berm with. This spot was just horrible, nasty caliche, and it still is. But about three years ago, this little patch, um, I planted some hubam clover on it. It's a legume. Um, planted some Austrian winter pea. So I've thrown out some seeds a couple of times, but I don't think I ever planted any blue bonnet seeds here unless they came from uh, a wildflower seed mix. So you can see, we do have blue bonnets around. You know, and maybe one of the ones up here flowered, but whatever went in there, they really liked. So if you're trying to establish blue bonnets, blue bonnet seeds are, you know, 30, 40, 50 dollars a pound depending on who you're getting them from, but the hubam clover and the Austrian winter pea and the spring legume mix and your iron and clay cow peas and your, you know, lab lab, you can get all those for less than a dollar a pound. Uh, the so soybeans are like 45, 50 cents a pound. You can treat them with the rhizobium inoculant or just throw them out. Um, and as they start growing, they inoculate the soil with the microbes that things like these blue bonnets like. And this is one of the best stands of blue bonnets I have ever seen on nasty caliche soil. And I don't think they would ha have looked nearly as pretty if I had not taken the time to plant those other cover crops. So is this Berman swale um, damaging the landscape? Absolutely. I mean, this, this subsoil hardly grows anything. There are some um, Engelman's daisies that can survive, the Damianita can survive, this hill country pinstemon, I'm really pleased with it, but normally it gets, you know, killed off by the deer. This is some about to start sprouting um, Queen's Delight. There are things that can grow on this nasty caliche soil, like um, uh, little blue stem. Uh, oh, here's one of the hill country pinstemons blooming. It's a beautiful plant. Sorry, it's probably not focusing on it. But um, but what I'm really trying to get at is the hill country native grasses are, are pretty tough and stout and hardy. But if you can get some cover crops to get your soil microflora going and uh, microbes uh, activated, um, when blue bonnets get into soil that's prepped for it, or any plant really, gets into soil that's prepped for it, the results are pretty impressive. Thanks for watching.